Hi guys and welcome to another tutorial. This is uh, my drawing of a cat's eye. Uh, I'm just doing a series of these uh, small tutorials and small drawings because I'm trying to get back into the groove of things. Uh, as you can see here, I'm just I've got my sketch drawing down and I've uh, dampened it out with the uh, kneaded eraser to get rid of some of the pencil marks. And now I'm just starting off here with a, uh, the pupil of a cat's eye. I'm not going to uh, get too serious with all the fur around the cat's eye, I'm just going to concentrate on the eyeball really, on the actual cat's eye itself. And what I wanted to do with this video, instead of just making it real time, because if this was in real time it would be hours long, um, I'm going to sort of mix it up a bit, have some slower speeds and some uh, time lapse, uh, just to, you know, so you can still see what I'm doing and you can still see what I'm mixing in and how I'm doing it. Uh, basically, I've just I've just gone in there with a darker grey and a black for the pupil, and then I've gone in with an ult light ultramarine and a sky blue. These are polychrome moss pencils, uh, and that's a, a Caran Dash. I'm going in with there. That was the uh, silver grey. So I'm going back in with the sky blue here, and then in with the darker blue, which is the uh, uh, let me think the Prussian blue. Uh, polychromos. All these pencils are polychromos unless I state that they're Caran uh, like that one was, the silver grey there. You can tell the Caran ones, that's a Caran uh, they're the wooded pencils, you can tell. Uh, all the, the coloured, actual coloured pencils are polychromos. And there I'm just blending in all those blues and greys around the edge with um, some white spirits and a brush. Now I'm starting to go in, trying to define some of the shapes uh, for the greens and the yellows that are going to go in this eye. Uh, the pencil I'm using there is a earth green yellowish. And uh, it's a lovely green, it's a light green, it's a very light green, it's uh, got a lot of yellow in it as well. Hence the name, green yellowish. That's a cream that I'm using there. And... What I basically do to build up these layers of these greens and yellows is uh, I use the earth green yellowish mixed in with a, a chromium green opaque, um, a juniper green, a cream, and then I'll use just a normal base yellow and green to, to blend in. Um, I actually do the blending with the uh, white spirits again in the brush. Uh, because this way I can get five or six layers of the pencil in the greens and the yellows and then I can blend with the uh, white spirits. Then I can go in again and put more layers on and blend again and I can do this as many times as, as I like as long as I keep the, the layers nice and light. And then at the end if I do want to burnish I can go in with a cream or a yellow over the top or depending on which area of the eye I'm on I can go in and then burnish if I want and just press it all in. Uh, just to blend all that colour in. It, it's all, it, it all depends on preference, really. Um, you can blend with the white spirits and the brush and leave it at that. Or you can burnish and leave it at that. You can do a mixture of the two. It all depends on what you're comfortable with. You usually find your own way. Uh, and that's what I'm doing at the moment. I'm practising a lot, trying to find my own way. Well, I say practising a lot. I'm practising as much as I can. Uh, for those of you who saw my last video, it, it's not all doom and gloom. I'm not uh, down on my art or anything. Uh, I had a comment off uh, one of my subscribers saying that he thought I was a bit down, which was very nice of him to ask and to inquire. And uh, But now I assure you I'm not down. I'm quite an optimistic person. Um, I do believe that I suffer a little bit from uh, seasonal disorder, sad. Uh, I don't really like January and February. February is my least favourite month. As I'm sitting here talking to you now, it's bucketing it down with snow and it's really cold outside I've got to walk Jesse my cocker spaniel in a minute I'm not looking forward to it um, it's not nice at all um, um, I had pneumonia when I was 19 so I don't really like colds I don't like having them and I always seem to whenever I get a cold I don't have runny really noses or coughs I just have a lingering that lingering sensation of when you've got a cold and it's not very nice so this time of the year is not my favourite time of year. So anybody who thought I was down on my last video, it's not really anything to do with my art and I'm not really down. It's just a little disgruntled with the weather and just a bit put off by it. And of course, when you come out of that Christmas period as well, it's always hard to pick the pencils up and get back into it again. 
Um, but yeah, that video was just intended just to show people that you don't have to be too afraid to trash a drawing. Uh, you don't have to be too worried about it. It is what it is. Um, I have actually kept that drawing just for you know future reference. You know, just as a reminder. I know it looks like I screwed it up because of the, the picture on the front. The uh, thumbnail's got a screwed up piece of paper next to it. But that was just for effect. Just, just give the impression that you know I've trashed it. Uh, I didn't actually screw it up. That's a blank piece of paper. Anyway, you can see I've been going in with the greens and the yellows. I've been trying to add some detail. I've put that sort of brown sort of vein in the corner. Um, I work at that vein with um, a raw umber, uh, polychromos, and a sepia caran d'ache. I do believe I'm going with that as well. And you can see me blending there again with the white spirits. As always, these videos, um, sorry if I waffle on a lot of the time. Um, none of them scripted. I don't sit there and work out what I'm going to say or think, oh, what's going to happen here? What I do, I just edit the video, uh, the bits that I think need to be speeded up, the bits that are slowed down, and then I basically just record my narration over it while I'm watching it. So there's no plan. Um, any any time I could just cock up and have to start again, but uh, that's just that's just the way I do it. That's the way I like to do it. As you can see here, I've slowed it down a bit more because I'm sort of defining the, the eyeball, the lines of the eyeball. And uh, you can see how high I'm holding the pencil there. That's because I'm using a really light touch on this to do this line. And the reason I'm doing that is because if you hold the pencil too far down and you put too much pressure on this line and you get it wrong, it's very difficult to remove. It's very difficult to erase. So if you put a nice light pressure on it, uh, and you get it wrong, then you can use the electric riser to get rid of it. Well, I prefer using uh, the battery operated eraser anyway. Um, it does get rid of coloured pencil. Uh, I'm sure other rubbers do, but I don't like to use handheld erasers with coloured pencil because, as you can imagine, that backwards and forwards motion of rubbing out, it, you know, if it, it, it can smudge and it can, you know, ruin your drawing. Whereas the battery operated or electric erasers, um, because they're spinning or vibrating so fast that they just take that, if you use a point on that line or on the point that you want to get rid of, then it just lifts that uh, coloured pencil off that piece of paper without smudging it. I find that a lot better, uh, you know, each to their own. Some people might find it different, but that's the way I like to do it anyway. As you can see now, I'm going in with a, another darker pencil. That's the Juniper Green. Um, just trying to define some little details in the eyeball, some veins, some markings, some blemishes. And I've just, what I've done with the blues uh, on, the, on that actual black pupil, the reason I've done that is to, to create that reflection. And you can see that it pours over into another part of the eyeball as well, off the pupil and that's because you often get that with reflection it'll hit that dark spot and shine off onto another part uh, so that's what's happening there as you can see I'm still drawing in some details some little veins and stuff what I'll do with that is I'll go in with like I'm going in with a lighter green now the earth green yellowish uh, and I'll go in with yellows and some of the lighter greens again and I'll get some of that, as you can see I'm doing there, get some of that area blocked in with colour. Once I've got en enough colour blocked in, using the cream as well there, when I've got enough of that area blocked in, I'll use the white spirits with the brush to blend that in. And then hopefully, what you, what you hope to achieve here is those green lines I've green, the divining little veins and the little marks, when you've gone over with the yellows and the light greens and the, whichever colour you're using, when you go over with the white spirits, it'll give those lines a sort of blurred look to them, if you like. It'll sort of blend them into the colour but still keep that line because they're quite defined. But it gives it that lovely blurred look that, that the eyeball has. The pupil of an eye, you know, it's not fantastically defined unless you're looking at it with a microscope or it's on a computer screen obviously but when you're looking at somebody's eye if you, if you try and 
look at definitions and lines a lot of them are quite blurry or blended into the background it's it's almost as if say if you're using watercolors and you touch that paint to the, the paper and it sort of bleeds it spreads that's what these lines sort of do within the color that you're blending with if that makes any sense so yeah that's what I'm trying to achieve there and I thought I'd sort of let this little bit run at more or less normal speed just so you can see see it's, it's not there's no great control with the part that part there I'm just sort of roughly filling in the spaces this is because well, when you're putting your first layers in with coloured pencil what you're initially trying to do is to cover the tooth of the paper so I like to maybe go in one direction with a pencil and uh, three or four times and then maybe come back in the other direction across the top of it sort of like a cross hatch that makes it blend a lot better now you can see where I'm blending in there you can see I've put that turquoisey sort of colour at the bottom because that's blending in with the, the bottom and where the eyelid's going to go but you can still see underneath that turquoisey bit you can still see those that green yellowish and juniper green you can still see the the lines that are put in but as I was saying if you look now they're not exactly lines anymore they've sort of spread sort of bled into the paper and that gives it a much more realistic look than if it was just a, a drawn line or a small line I hope uh, that makes sense I hope you can follow that um, the reason I'm uh, mixing up this drawing uh, with real-time slower time time lapse mixing it all up is as I said the video would be too long for YouTube really um, and I don't want to bore you to death with like four or five hours of narration so I've tried to, tried to keep this at about half an hour so you know you can still get the general gist of what I'm doing you can still hear me explaining or trying to explain what I'm doing and what I'll do in the future once I start my patreon uh, with this for example I could put the full five six hour video wherever it was in the end I could put that on patreon for the people who want to watch it step by step all the way through and try and follow it themselves and do it themselves but this is the first time I've drawn an eye this is the first real time I've actually drawn any eye really let alone an animal's eye uh, I've obviously drawn animal eyes in animal portraits but you know the the tiny little things really small but uh, this is the first time I've tried to draw an eye like this and the reason I'm doing this is because I just want to give you a sort of an idea of how much detail goes into an eye even when I'm drawing a smaller eye on a complete animal I'll try and do as much detail or put as much detail as I can in like I was going over there with the, the Caran Dash white and silver grey to sort of blend that area out even more to make it look even more sort of misty and then I'm blending again with the white spirits so you'll probably see through this video you'll probably think gosh how many times is he blending here that's you know I can I've put down an initial five or six layers and then blended with the white spirit and then I've gone in with another three or four layers and then blended with the white spirit and then I'll go in with another three or four and blend again and then I'll go in again with probably another three or four and blend again uh, that's the way I like to do it and I think you get more coverage of the paper you stop these white bits coming in on this bit now um, I'm doing that sort of sleep part the corner part of the eye and I'm using uh, a Calpic mark here I believe it's a C3 a cool grey 3 now a lot of the times when I'm drawing coloured pencils I like to use a marker underneath as a base and then go over the top of that with pencil it works really well a lot a lot of artists do it it's a really nice technique to use uh, but again with this you obviously can't rub it out at all so the uh, culpit markers don't erase so the best thing to do when you're doing this is make sure these are definite lines that you want in definite marks that you want on your paper uh, when I was doing that corner sleep bit sleep sleepy eye bit um, there is a, a technical term for it but it escapes me at the moment um, when I was doing that I realized that I had to be careful because if I got the the line wrong or the shape wrong then it would ruin the whole thing 
So yeah, you have to be really careful. Now this bit, I'm just blocking in uh, the underneath the eye, the eyelid, and the little at the top. Uh, and then, I'm so sorry, uh, I forgot to press record on the camera when I came back after a break. <laughs> so what I've actually done there, you saw me putting that grey down. Now I've gone over that grey with a Caran d'Ache sepia and also a polychromos black, a polychromos slate grey, a polychromos panes grey and a polychrom uh, polychromos sorry, cold grey 6. So I've mixed in a lot of greys and blacks with a sepia to get that underneath that eye, the uh, eyelid. Now I'm sort of going in really slowly with a uh, some really light uh, browns. This is a raw umber polychromos. Um, I'm just sort of, no great detail here, just defining a few of the hairs above the eye, um, where the eyebrow would go, or just above the eyelid. And like I said earlier, this is all about the eyeball really. I'm not going into any great detail uh, with the fur or the hairs around the eye. Uh, I just wanted to put this in just to give it a little bit more, not realism, but um, just to make the eye look even more like an eye, as if it's, you know, sitting in, well, sitting where it's supposed to sit, within the fur of the eye. Um, so I'm loosely going around with a raw umber, and uh, I'll use a, a Van Dyke brown and the slight grey again, just to define some of those hairs around that. Uh, the corner of the eye there as well. You always get that bit on a cat or a dog where, you know, where the, the corner of the eye is leaked out, uh, tears or sleep or whatever, and it's sort of dirtied up that bit of fur. Now I'm going over that corner bit again, this time with a Calpic uh, C5, with a cool grey 5. And I've left, as you notice, that line, because that's going to be a lighter grey when I go over with the pencil. Um, I'm going in now over the raw umber with the polychromos black just to define some of the darker areas where the fur from the eye turns into that body fur and gets a bit darker. And now with the corner bit you can see I'm going over the pencils now. And what I'm doing, I'm using a combination of cold greys and warm greys. I'm using the cold grey for that dark corner area going into that black and then I'm using a warmer grey for the highlight. Now I'm using a Posca white marker just to get the highlights up a bit uh, over the uh, pupil, get that reflection going a bit more. Now I'm going in over that turquoise bit again with a cream and a warm grey just to lighten it up a bit so it's not quite so turquoise now you can see and um, I feel that that gives it a bit more realism. I'm using the warm grey now to go over those little defining lines and the details that I used the juniper green for. But I'm going in with a warm grey now just to lighten them up a bit, just to give that reflection as well a bit more oomph. Because with the warm greys at the bottom of that reflection, that reflection is showing more because it's, it's the contrast with the grey and the white. Uh, now I'm just going in with the raw umber again in between the blacks leaving some of those white lines in as well and you'll see me in a little while I'm just uh, blending through stuff now putting a bit of greys into the highlights using the white Caran d'Ache again there's the Posca white marker again just uh, putting a few highlights into that corner and a few more in places on the eye redefining that vein again as well and now what I'm doing, I'm using the white spirits with a brush to blend in the black and the slight grey and the raw umber and the Van Dyke brown. Just to make that fur just look a bit more realistic. Like I said, I don't really want to concentrate on it or make it, you know, perfect. I'm not really that concerned with making the fur look real on this drawing because it's an eye tutorial. But obviously, if I was doing a full portrait of an animal, then I would take more time on the fur. Um, I would make it more, look more realistic. But that said, even with that said, I'm quite pleased with the way 
this tutorial came out. Um, the fur does look quite nice there. I've got that sort of warm texture to it. Um, I like the contrast that I've created with the eyelid. As I was saying, that the bottom part of that eye, eyelid and the, and the fur is not, it's not totally defined. It's not brilliant in any way at all. Um, but that wasn't my objective with this video or this drawing. It was just a practice for me and also, you know, hopefully a nice tutorial or a how-to for some beginning artists uh, like me. Um, so yeah, I hope it's worked in that sense anyway. Um, what I do now is I'm touching up again, going across again with the, the black and the Payne's grey to define those lines under the eyelids. Uh, also the raw rum by the Caran uh, sorry, the uh, sepia, the Caran Gone in with the uh, white spirits again. And now I am putting more definition in, more detail again, using some dark greens, the juniper green, using some cold greys but then still going in over with the cream and the yellows as well, just to lighten it up a bit. Uh, also I'll put in some raw umber and some uh, sepia in there again. And then once I've done this detail again, this is another layer obviously, then I'll go in again with the white spirits, just to soften it up again, to give it that blending effect, that uh, blended effect. Um, pardon me. Just have a drink of water. Wow, the snow is really coming down here now. Um, I hope there's rain in it because if there's not and this sticks, it's going to be quite deep. But anyway, yeah. Uh, those marks I used, look, going back in with the ju juniper green now. Now, a lot of you might say, well, hold on a minute. You did these lines with the juniper green and then you did the turquoise colour at the bottom. But then you told us that you went in with a warm grey to do the contrast with the reflection and everything. Well, yeah, I did do that. And the reason I'm going over with the green again now is because some of the lines do need to be more defined. Um, you can you can see the parts that you yourself when you're doing a drawing, you know what needs to be dulled down, if you like, or blended in more. And you know what needs to leap out of the paper more. Or you know what, you know, you just need, sometimes you just need a subtle touch or a subtle line just to set something off. Um, and talking about that, I'm going in with a Posca white marker now, look, around those Jupiter, ju juniper green lines that I did. Because then you've got the green line in there, and then you've got a little bit of white marker. And it, that helps highlight that part of the drawing, but also brings that green out as well. It's sort of almost as if the white is helping the green to stand out, if that makes sense. Uh, yeah, what I'm doing now is just, again, just looking over the eye, finding different parts that, you know, you'll always notice things that you've missed or notice things that could be better or notice things that you haven't done. And sometimes uh, you can sit there for too long and you can find too many mistakes and sometimes you can try and change things that much that you end up ruining the drawing so it's a fine line you can see I'm wiping the the white mark with my finger there uh, you can do that if you get it wrong or sometimes it's nice to just rub with your finger and it gives it that again blended in look that smear it sort of smears the ink off the marker and that, that can also add to realism as well but yeah, I'm uh, quite pleased with this one, seeing as how, dis how disgruntled I was with the cat and how wrong that went in my eyes. No pun intended. Um, yeah, I'm quite pleased with the way this one's turned out, especially for a first effort at an eye. Uh, not blowing my own trumpet or anything, or, you know, even though I say so myself, I'm, you know, it's not bad. It's not bad at all. Um... I am quite pleased with this one. It's not, you know, like I said, it's not brilliant and I'm not like, wow, you know, I'm really pleased with this and I can't believe I've done this, this is great, you know, it's not quite to that level, but it was never intended to be, to be honest. Uh, I'm just happy that I'm back on track, I'm back at the drawing board or at the drawing table, uh, and I'm starting to uh, feel it again.
get back into that vibe of uh, drawing. You can see I'm dabbing the white bits again of a white marker there just to dull them down. If you look at the bit, the grey bit on the uh, eye, the corner bit, the slate bit, you can see how white they are, the, the definitions of the white there. Well, you can also see I just went in with a white, dabbed it with my finger, and then I've gone over with a slightly darker grey, a slate grey, and then a warm grey on top. So you've still got that little eye light underneath that bit, but it's not shiny white. So sometimes if you want a highlight, but you don't want it to be totally white, then you can wait for it to dry, you can go in with a warm grey over it, or whichever grey you want. Um, or if you don't want to wait for it to dry, you just want it to have that more smeared or blended look, you can rub your finger over it. And then once it's dry, you can still go in with the grey just to put lines in to break up the, that whiteness. What I'm doing with the pupil here now is I'm just redefining that sort of shiny blue in the eye. Going in with the Prussian blue there. Uh, that's the darkest blue. Uh, covering it with a layer of black at the top because I want that top part to blend into that black line. Yeah, so the Prussian bruise blue is more middle bottom than top. Yeah, so at the top you've got that Prussian blue. You've got the Prussian blue across the whole top of that pupil, but then you've got the black towards the very top of it, towards that black line. And then towards the bottom, I'll go in with the ultramarine and the sky blue again, perhaps. And now I'm using the silver grey and the white of the Caran d'Ache just to go over the whole thing, just to blend it in a bit more. This is sort of a slight burnish without having to use the white spirits to blend. I've slightly burnished that bit, going in with the sky blue again here. If you remember at the start, when I used the Prussian blue, the light ultramarine and the sky blue and the silver grey Caran d'Ache and the white, and now uh, you saw me going again, and now uh, you saw me going again with all those pencils and then again so you can see how many layers you can actually put and if you don't lose use a lot of pressure you can put you know 20 30 layers on and people think nah what's the point of that that doesn't do anything but it does uh, layers do work they do eventually blend together and if you work with it and practice at it it will give you that color that you eventually want um that's what i'm learning anyway that's the that's what the process is teaching me so hopefully it can do the same for you as you can see i'm going in with the prussian blue again even over the even over the silver gray and the white just to mix it up just to give it that blue i did sort of make a mistake on the the pupil uh at this stage with actually going in too hard with the prussian blue because it's uh, quite sharp the pencil and i did actually tear a little bit of the paper but I managed to cover that in uh, and it didn't really affect it. But you do have to be careful with that. Uh, one thing I will say, uh, you, you know this anyway, a lot of artists say, it, is always keep your pencils as sharp as you can. Uh, that way you don't use as much pencil when you, you're, you're drawing and you can sort of use your little circles, your little circle motion like I'm doing there without using that much uh, pencil, without using that much lead. Plus, obviously, if you've got a filthy great stump that you're trying to draw in a little bit of detail with, it's not going to work. You're just going to get smudges and you're just going to get like that sort of children's pencils effect. Um, so if you keep your pencils nice and sharp, one, you can do detail, and two, it's easy to blend with, especially when you're using a light touch and you're doing layers. Uh, maybe when you're burnishing, uh, it's better to have less of a point on your pencil. If you're burnishing, the point will break anyway. Uh, once you've burnished for a while, the, uh, it will come down into a bit of a stump. Uh, and it is quite good to burnish with because you've got more of a, a head to burnish with. Now I'm just cleaning up with the kneaded eraser, uh, cleaning up any marks that I've left with my fingers and stuff. And that was my cat's eye tutorial. And I hope that this has been of benefit to someone. I hope that you've learned something from it. I certainly did. Um, it's great to be back drawing again. It feels nice to be back in the saddle, so to speak. And after that Christmas period, 
um, nice to be back in the flow. I'd just like to say thank you to all my subscribers. I really, really appreciate it. Thanks to everybody who watches my videos. Thanks for all the lovely comments. Um, I really, really do appreciate it. If you haven't subscribed already, please do so. And I'll see you all soon on the next one. Okay. Bye.